Welcome to Mr. T's Geometry Videos. Um, in this video, we will be studying quadrilaterals. And a quadrilateral, as defined there, is a four-sided polygon. Uh, as I go through these definitions, I am going to be moving pretty quickly, um, but I encourage you to use the pause button to go ahead and uh, take any notes that are necessary for you, or uh, use the rewind button and watch it again, or if you go to uh, my website, you can uh, actually download this Prezi and view it yourself. The first type of quadrilateral, there are really three types of quadrilateral, but the first one we're going to study is what's called a kite. A kite um, takes on this general shape, and it's kind of the classic shape of a kite that you'd fly in the air. The definition of a kite, and as I give you these definitions, I'm giving them to you uh, in the most precise terms that I can. And so a kite is a quadrilateral, which is telling you that it's got four sides with two pairs of consecutive sides congruent. And so if you look back at this picture, that would mean that AC and CB are congruent and AD and DB are congruent. And if they don't have those, pa those parallel sides congruent, uh, or those consecutive sides congruent, then it's not a kite. For now, that's all we're going to talk about with kites. It's a very simple definition. So we're going to go back and look at another type of quadrilateral, and that type is a trapezoid. This is one that you're probably familiar with if you've taken, you know, if you've had some geometry in some of your classes. Um, and a trapezoid has a very simple definition, and that is it's a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Now, that means it's a four-sided shape. The exactly means it can't have two pairs. It can only have one pair. And so if we look at it, in this case, it should be pretty clear that AB and CD are our parallel sides. And so that's what makes it a trapezoid. And we'll learn in additional videos some very important things about trapezoids. Now, there's one special type of trapezoid, and it's referred to as an isosceles trapezoid. And the definition for an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid whose non-parallel sides, so the sides that are not parallel, are congruent. So if we, we take a look at this picture, AC and DB are the non-parallel sides, and so for this trapezoid to be considered isosceles, AC would have to be congruent to DB. Congruent, remember, in, for segments means that it's two segments that are the same length. So the distance from A to C is equal to the distance from D to B. Okay, now our last type of quadrilateral is the most common and the one that we'll study the most in geometry, and that's what's referred to as a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral, again, four sides, with opposite sides parallel. Now, let me go back and reiterate what I said at the beginning. When you're looking at these definitions, we're going to be very precise. So in a second, I'm going to give you some very specific types of parallelograms, but I'm actually not going to use the word parallelogram in their definition because you can be even more precise than calling them parallelograms. But in this case, it is a, parale a parallelogram does have opposite sides parallel. That means that AB is parallel to CD. It means that BC is parallel to AD. It means that all of the theorems we know about parallel lines apply to this shape. The first special type of parallelogram is probably the one you're most familiar with, and that is a rectangle. Now, a rectangle is a parallelogram, but we don't have to um, call it that in the definition. It is enough to say a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. So the four angles, A, B, C, and D, all are right angles, and that makes it a rectangle. And then it turns out, if you have four right angles, you have opposite sides are parallel, which means that rectangles are parallelograms. Now, another precise definition that is equal, equally good, in my opinion, is a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four congruent angles. And take a second, I'm not going to give you the answer, but think about why the definition I've given you on the screen and that definition, meaning a rectangle is a quadrilateral with four congruent angles, are equivalent to each other. Why are they the same? Okay, the next type of um, parallelogram is what we refer to as a rhombus. A rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. 
they're not necessarily at right angles. I'm not telling you whether or not they're parallel. I'm just telling you that AD is congruent to DC, is congruent to CB, is congruent to BA, and that makes it a rhombus. We, we don't know much else about it besides those four sides. But it turns out, and this can be easily shown, that a rhombus also is a parallelogram. So you have a rhombus that's a parallelogram, you have a rectangle that's a parallelogram. And then the last type of quadrilateral we want to talk about is a one that probably the first one that you ever learned, and that is a square. And simply put, a square is a rhombus that is also a rectangle. Or you could say a square is a rectangle that is also a rhombus. And this brings up a very important concept that, that students learn at some point in time, and that is that all rectangle or all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. And so um, a, a couple you could define a square using the definitions of rhombus and rectangle, meaning you could say a square is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides and four right angles, but we can use our definitions and make it a more precise definition by just calling it a rhombus and a rectangle together. Um, just the last couple things before we wrap this up, I think it's helpful to go ahead and look at this diagram, and this diagram can help you remember that a parallelogram um, is kind of the top thing and then a rectangle and rhombus both fit underneath parallelogram though they don't necessarily fit together and then when you combine a rectangle and a rhombus you get a square and this is important when we start learning some theorems about parallelograms because any theorem we learn about a parallelogram could then be applied to a rectangle and a rhombus and any theorem we learn about a rectangle and a rhombus can then be applied to a square so again uh, this just gives you a nice overview of quadrilaterals um, I, I encourage you to, to visualize this or to come up with a way to visualize it. Uh, it's very important to know how these fit together because once you learn the theorems, you need to be able to know which theorems apply to which quadrilateral.